And hello, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of The Zone TV Movie Entertainment with me, your host, Jonathan, once again, bringing you my thoughts and review for last night's episode of Superman and Lois, Season 3, Episode 12. Now, the wait is finally over. He has arrived, and the one and only Lex Luthor is officially in Smallville. And that's right, Lex Luthor has officially arrived on Superman and Lois. A very different take on, on the Lex Luthor character, obviously, but... um. He's been in prison for, I think he said 17 years, something like that, because he was convicted uh, by, you know, Lois Lane's articles and framed by Mannheim. He's finally free. Mannheim, you know, they confessed all that stuff. So he's finally out of jail. So what exactly does Lex Luthor do? Does he go back to Lex Corp? Does he go back and run the place? You know, get ready to become mayor? No. He takes a walk down memory lane and he heads down on the highway all the way to Kansas, literally all the way to Kansas. And he walks all the way to Lois Lane's and Clark Kent's house. And he basically warns Lois, hey, listen, what you did to me was kind of fucked up. I've done some main things, yes, I know, but I was innocent at that point and you didn't believe me. And you basically threw away the key. I want you to retire, otherwise there's going to be rain of fire coming down on you. Which we all know Lex Luthor will keep his word and probably try to ruin Lois Lane by, you know, trapping her somewhere so that way he can also kill Superman as well. We all know how crafty he is. While that all happened, we also got to see Jordan starting to act a little bit snotty. Because now that the fact that he saved um, Sam and the other kid, you know, he thinks he's Mr. Superman. Literally, even though he is, kind of. You know, he's letting the, the the public, you know, like, you know, admiring him kind of way go to his head. And people are starting to get suspicious of who is this super kid and, you know, where does he come from? Why is he in Smallville? And it's going to his head. He's just trying to help, but, you know, he's, he's also trying to be a bragger in a way. So we got to see some of that. Uh, Jonathan's still doing his thing at the, the fire department, but yet the fire department is now kind of treating him differently because of the fact that Sam's father knows that his dad's Superman, so there's that. And, <clears throat> yeah, they, they were just getting ready to prepare for themselves for the worst when Lex Luthor shows up and, you know, what is, what's his main scheme? We find out at the end, he, he ends up finding Bizarro. So... That's something. Could that lead into something? Probably. Could it lead to something else? Who knows? But, um, yeah. It was a very interesting episode. I do like the fact that we got to see Jordan, like, get angry at his dad and use his powers against him. A little bit. Not too much, but still. Because he wants to use his powers. They're trying to tell him, hey, man, cool off with the power saving people. You know, people getting suspicious because they, you know, find out about you. They can find out about me. And... The whole secret gets blown, which, you know, I never understood Superman's, you know, identity problem because honestly, you know, even though he doesn't wear a mask, he doesn't need a mask. I feel like everybody's, everybody in Smallville and also everybody in Metropolis are kind of stupid. You know what I mean? Because honestly, besides Lois Lane, everybody should have known that, oh, wow, this guy looks like Clark Kent, but he, he's Superman. And they put that, that nonsense two to two together. It's not like it's Bruce Wayne and, oh, yeah, Bruce Wayne's Batman. We can't tell it's Batman because he's wearing a mask. But if Batman wasn't wearing a mask and he was just Bruce Wayne underneath the mask and nobody could tell because he puts on a pair of glasses, then people are just stupid. Just, I, I never understood the fact, the fact that Superman's identity couldn't disguise and fool everybody just because he starts acting bumbly sometimes when he acts like a bumbling Clark Kent or a nice guy. But everybody knows... Clark Kent's face. Everybody knows Superman's face, but yet they can never put that together. Like just regular folks can't put that together. I just I that always bothered my mind, boggled my mind. Sorry, it's just like very weird. But yet when Jordan he tries to put a mask on, and, you know Lois and, and Clark are getting very upset with him using his powers when nobody can see his face. Kind of, he's wearing goggles. Yeah, sure, but still, it's barely anybody can have his haircut. Nobody, ha nobody else has Clark Kent's face except Clark Kent. Oh wait, how come Superman has your face, but yet 
Are you Superman? It never made it, Superman it didn't it never made sense to me, but whatever. Other than that, <laughs> that's like the only thing that always boggles my mind with any Superman lore. It's just, like, very interesting, the fact that Superman and Clark Kent always look alike, and nobody notices that, but whatever. But yet, to get on, on Jordan's case, the fact that he's wearing a mask, he's trying to conceal his identity, he's wearing a hoodie, mask, and he's trying to use his powers, but yet, they, they snap at him, but what can he do? But, um, yeah, overall, I thought the episode was okay. You know, the look of Lex Luthor to me was, was interesting too. I do like the whole rugged, tough guy version of him. Though all that stuff was pretty interesting. You know, we got to see him in prison and, you know, he was in a regular prison. But it does show, even without his money, his tech, he's still Lex Luthor. He can make people do whatever he wants when he wants it to happen. Sure, he can get beat up by prisoners. But he's always going to have one, you know... One chick up his sleeve, so I thought that was pretty interesting. There's a scene in the episode where he gets beat up, and then he goes to the ward and he's like, "Hey, I'm in charge here. You got to do what I say." And he tells him to make a phone call, and his wife and kids are getting kidnapped at, at that exact moment. So then, <clears throat> Lex Luthor gets all the guards on his side. He gets all the prisoners to fall in line. So I thought that was pretty interesting. The fact that. No matter what version of Lex Luthor we always get, Lex Luthor is still a vicious, cold-blooded killer, and he's crazy in his nutcase. So, I thought that stuff was pretty cool. Will this Lex Luthor last? Who knows? But, um, until then, we're just gonna have to wait and see. So, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Stay tuned for more, and thank you very much, and have a good day.